Just uh, over a month left in the legislative session, and the important budget balancing work is in full swing. The House and Senate will hold their first Saturday floor sessions tomorrow morning, which you can watch live on our statewide Minnesota channel. And coming up on Monday, the House will debate a big and controversial health and human services bill containing budget cuts. Mary LaHammer has this in-depth look at the impact of that bill. Protesters piled cardboard boxes inside the state capitol, forming a makeshift homeless shelter to point out cuts to health and human services. I had to come up with $150 million in cuts. But it's nursing homes, especially in greater Minnesota, that are putting the most effective pressure on that HHS bill, and their funding level is slowly recovering. We are in a caregiving crisis. Um, it, it's, it's getting harder and harder and harder to recruit people that want to work in a nursing home. Christine Bakke runs a facility in St. Cloud. People can come and work for me for $10 an hour, and they have to deal with intense regulations, um, intense requirements, physically challenging work, emotionally challenging work, but they can go to Walmart and make $10 an hour. We're still hearing from nursing homes 2% is not enough. Well, I, I would agree, and that my big concern in both of the nursing homes and the uh, homes for the handicapped, uh, they are having huge turnovers of their staff. Lawmakers heard the cries of crisis in long-term care and nursing homes, so the House has increased the raises for workers a bit. A 3% increase for the individual employee is $9 for working in the 80-hour work week. And it's even a bigger concern for folks outside the Twin Cities. In many of the small communities in my district and districts all across the state, these nursing homes and care facilities are the largest employers in town. When you're out in a small town that has no hospital nearby, you don't get that extra business and it makes it that much harder to survive financially. These, some of these nursing homes are threatened with closing. Members, especially from greater Minnesota, say this is still not enough and nursing homes could still close and make their communities collapse. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the interesting things is those are the same members that have been holding nursing homes flat and cutting long-term care for a decade. Uh, so they don't really have a lot of credibility, quite honestly, with me. We have to increase the pay. Although when the health care chair first got his budget target, the cuts were so devastating he considered quitting. Now with paper filling his office floor, he's decided uh, not, to dive in. No, I've mellowed out a little, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still upset, but uh, I'm doing my job. I still don't understand why it was uh, decided that, uh, that everybody else would get a raise except Health and Human Services. Seniors and nursing homes get a lot of attention in election season. In the competitive legislative districts we followed, we saw candidates spending a lot of time asking for seniors' votes in nursing homes. So those lawmakers may now have some explaining to do. I think they should be worried. Um, you know, the seniors, they do vote. Um, they, they do pay attention. Are you wondering what happened to seniors? <laughs> we always wonder what happened to seniors. You know, the, the, the seniors are the, they're the people that help build the country into who it is. Um, they're at a very vulnerable time. And so it's always very frustrating to watch them be ignored by the legislature. After the legislature froze the rates for years for nursing homes, they were optimistic their budgets would improve more. Well, I think the 5% would work quite well. The nursing home folks have told me that they'd really be better off if no bill passed this year and if the current law stayed in place. What about some of the arguments Democrats are saying, you know, they kind of have to clean up after Republicans, after Republican legislatures froze nursing homes. Is there any truth to that? Well, there is some truth to that, but you have to remember, we were facing a $6 billion deficit. Huntley, too, would like to get up to a 5% increase, but he says that's not possible under the target number given to him by leadership. What about your leadership? Have you had words with them? Uh, it, uh, we've had discussions with them, and, and uh, I think they're working to come up with some more money. We were treated very poorly, and you just look at the leadership in the House. It's all metro. It's focused on Minneapolis. And frankly, uh, I don't think they have the real broad picture of the state. Well, I think they're absolutely wrong. And if they actually read the bills, they would find that out because we're investing a lot in LGA and property tax relief across the state. Our education bill makes incredible investments uh, in greater Minnesota. With billions proposed in tax increases on income, alcohol, and tobacco, there's still frustration more money couldn't be found for the most vulnerable. Well, obviously, we're going to have some uh, tax increases, uh, and um, I would hope the governor weighs in and uh, 
gets closer to his budget. And there's also millions of dollars in fee increases. Huge increase in the amount of money going into the budget, yet we can't find enough money to take care of these folks that really deserve to be taken care of. Here. Going forward, with more and more baby boomers aging, this issue isn't going away. The baby boomers are a huge pot of people. And if, if the legislators and the governor want to ignore them, it will be a mistake in their political futures.